is a case in hand where the private sector is working closely with the government on training and internship. Uh, the recruitment process, uh, which is currently uh, ongoing, is being uh, done online. All services at our Huduma centers, uh, for those of us from outside, Huduma centers are one-stop uh, centers <coughs> where you can access uh, all government offices, uh, services. Uh, it started off in Nairobi, and now uh, we have uh, centers which have uh, moved to other counties, and we hope to have an Auduma center in every uh, center. So all services in these centers are being automated, and or are automat uh, also being automated, and can be accessed uh, online uh, throughout the country. Uh, the launch of Rubik is therefore a great milestone in revolutionizing uh, application process for ISO 9001-2008 um, uh, certification. Uh, through uh, automating the whole process and bringing quality, uh, quality standards on the platform. Uh, this software therefore offers practical approach in, uh, of identification procedural gaps and associated underlying causes of these gaps and also uh, offers a system audit for organization structures and functions and I think I'm quite uh, impressed with the, the, the various speakers uh, who have uh, really talked about um, uh, the organizational structures, functions, and aligning them um, uh, uh, together, and then having at least a one point whereby uh, the management can control uh, information and can uh, share information uh, very easily. This is yet a great innovative idea being spearheaded um, by some of our youth, and I think I really need to thank Jacob, uh, who's just introduced me, because uh, uh, when I met him uh, with a team from uh, uh, USL, among the, the early, the, uh, the, the, the youth who had gained the early uh, fellowship, uh, who went to America and came back, and I think when we met them together with the principal secretary, uh, they had quite uh, a lot of good ideas, which, uh, if at all, uh, we embrace the ideas that are, are being brought uh, on board by the youth. Uh, we indeed are going to go a great, uh, make a great milestone in developing uh, this country. Uh, what I have to say is that uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, external tours, external visits by uh, senior government officers, uh, including me. <laughs> now, when we come back with some of these ideas from where we go, a uh, very few of us um, at, at least at our age, because I'm not yet um, I'm out of the youth bracket, a very few of us are able to actualize what we learn and um, share it out with others. But for our youth, um, especially the team that, uh, uh, that uh, recently went to America uh, under the uh, Barack Obama uh, Yali program, uh, most of them have come with bright ideas which are uh, indeed going to revolutionize uh, some of the, uh, in some ways that we, uh, we uh, function in this country. I even believe that uh, maybe the youth uh, are the ones who went to South Africa, met our directors, and brought this idea which has totally benefited or uh, changed our KPA as uh, we have had. Uh, this is yet another uh, great innovative idea being spearheaded. It's my belief that most of our youngsters will emulate uh, this. I also know we have many youth with bright ideas that need to be nurtured and mentored. I call upon all stakeholders uh, to support uh, innovations uh, by our youth. So with those few remarks, I wish to say thank you and may God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Dalenda. I'm humbled by your comments. To the youth who have brought this innovation, Marcy, Claire, and the team, congratulations. Now I'd like to call upon the chief guest for the day, who is holding a seat that, yes, we only see on TV. <laughs> Give it up for the chairperson, Public Service Commission, Professor Margaret Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacob, for that introduction. I'm actually here live, We're not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Professor Margaret Kovia. I'm the chairperson, Public Service Commission, and I'm happy to join you today because I do believe this is a very an event 
that can surely and truly make a difference within the public service. Uh, the CEO, Kamara International, CEO, Pamoja, uh, Crown Services, and the invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, good morning. Let me start by saying how I met Jacob, because I'm here, because Jacob did invite me, as you have been told by the Director of Youth, that uh, there was youth, youth, Young African Spinders Initiative, where about 5,000 Kenyans applied to participate in that program, and uh, 46 did succeed in getting the six weeks training with uh, in the US where they also participated in the head of state forum that was organized by uh, President Obama. And when I met um, uh, Jacob after he had come back and it was in one of the functions and he did approach me and told me he has this initiative uh, that is going to be launched today and uh, can I come and if possible can I look for having a secretary, Matiang, so that he can be able to also accompany me to this particular event. And what I saw in, uh, I was convinced that Jacob, you are the right person. He is an entrepreneur because he's an entrepreneur because he sees an opportunity and goes ahead to execute it. So as he came to me with the confidence, and I told him, yes, I think I'll come. And this morning, I uh, said I really have to be here because I'm one person who really supports the youth, and I also keep my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. The, the organization that I work for, Public Service Commission, we establish offices, we appoint people in these offices, to manage them through the division in the ministries, and then we also did exercise disciplinary control. One of our main goals, why we exist, is to have efficiency and effectiveness in the public service. Therefore, this particular event really fits within our agenda. And I think we are very happy to be here. I brought one uh, officer who works with me. Daniel, can you stand and wave wherever you are? Good morning, everyone. So he was quite useful in making sure that I come. So let me, <laughs> let me also appreciate the public service institutions here, starting with the APA, and for your testimony, it was a very, very good testimony, testimony, and even the metaphors we gave were quite very useful. You know, a public service is very complex. And the, the, the reason why public service is complex is because we have multiple stakeholders, we have multiple goals, including the Ministry of Inau Infrastructure is in charge, which will be having staff like 300, is also in charge of state corporations, which are 7,000. Does that pose a challenge? Yes. That the, the fact that you have multiple stakeholders, the PS, you see the ministry must be aware of what state corporations are doing. Therefore, the point I'm driving at is having a quality management system is the only way we can improve efficiency and effectiveness in the public service. When I was at, can you clap for that? Yes. It is the only way, unless we really have this uh, quality management system in place, that's the only way we can now operate, use the resources that have been provided to us and make public service more effective. When I was at the Kenya School of Government, I championed ISO certification for the school. We also did the recertification, and I'm sure now they are on their fourth. What am I saying? I remember the manual documentation of all the processes, and now that we have this software, I'm imagining that life is even getting better. Therefore, for me, as a, 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 a student of management, I think I believe this is on continuous improvement. This software, Rubik, is it called Rubik? Rubik Cube. Rubik Cube. Rubik Cube. I think holds the promise for improving public service. I also want to believe that uh, all the people who have spoken before me, I think the points I've made and I've seen that my students of management, they all made sense. The only thing for all of us as a challenge, let's not just be hearers, right? 
let us go over the practice. Let's, me and the, the director of youth, we needed to make sure that now that all government ministries, state corporations, we have actually all signed as a target to be ISO certified. Mm -hmm. Now that we have a new software, RubyQ, that can even help those who are certified or those who are still working towards it, I think we should see a, build, a, a better future for this country in terms of the public service. Therefore, to go back to my speech, I'm pleased to join you this morning at the launch of the RubyQ software for admission of the ISO 9001-2008 certification process. May I also take this opportunity to thank the cooperation of partners that is Kamara International and the Samoja Crown Services for this initiative on developing this RubyQ software that is going to be used to transform the public service. Indeed, it is one thing to develop a revolutionary product, but it's quite another to attain successful use of the product in the existing and emerging markets. In my view, today's launch helps the product developers attain the twin goal of the product placement and the opening and discourse on the need to integrate quality management in the public service. While, uh, while opting to leave out the details on the science of quality, quality uh, management, on, the, on this occasion, I want to share with you an assessment of the status of some of the successes, challenges, and opportunities that lie within the public service as far as this RubyQ launch is concerned. Famed as quality standard that goes straight to an organization, bottom line, and I would say the public service, in the private sector we see the bottom line is the profit. But in the public service we see the bottom line is to what extent uh, does the customer, so customer satisfaction is our bottom line. And of course in the public service, who is our customer? We are looking at the entire Kenya citizen, including yourself, you also use government services. So the bottom line is your satisfaction. Yeah, this would include, uh, this, with this software, this would mean streamlining efficiency and effectiveness, cost containment and savings, employee motivation, consistency and information flow, time management, service and performance to the highest level, business, customer service, accountability, traceability, market potential, and the opening up to a larger career type. Uh, let me say also, the public service sometimes is quite disturbed in terms of when we are not clear with the standard operating procedures. And I think for those who work in the public service can be clear with that, where we have a lot of gray areas. Therefore, if we can have Rubik you help us streamline our processes in the terms of standardization, I think then we would even enjoy and uh, we know motivated staff give more satisfied service. Ladies and gentlemen, in Kenya, like in many other developing countries, there is an enormous gap between the rampant and ma manifest need for standardization. Although Kenya Bureau of Standards, as a national standard body, has advanced in the realm of standardization, this has not been transmit uh, translated into conscious use of standard by ordinary citizens as a means of enhancing quality of output in most production and service system. If citizens would demand quality services and goods, the public service would respond by providing higher products with which meet the international standards and the market that driving competitiveness of local goods and services globally. That in turn creates wealth and reduces the quality of life for the citizen. I think that's why public service exists again, that we must have that facilitating an environment where doing business becomes more competitive, and by so doing, then it creates value for the citizen. In terms of capacity building, ladies and gentlemen, the Kenya Bureau of Standards provides training to the public and the private sector as part of its mandate in creating awareness and the technical expertise in quality management 
and conformative assessment. It is my hope also, do we have anybody from Kenya Bureau of Finance here? I, I think that would really benefit because they have been offering training, three-day training for all the public institutions which are undertaking ISO satisfaction and I'm sure this is where they would benefit. I hope Director of Youth, we could reach out for them to know this opportunity exists. I saw 9,000 at one certification in the public sector, the means skewed towards more commercial state cooperation, the here like KPA. Although the mainstream public service is predominantly service oriented, through performance contracting, it has registered limited motivation for adoption of ISO 9000 certification standards. Therefore, the launch of this uh, software uh, on automation of ISO certification is timely and much needed. Ladies and gentlemen, much success has been registered in the adoption implementation and the sustaining of ISO standards in the segment of public service. The penetration of these standards in the public sector continue to face uh, structural and systematic challenges which I want to mention for the purpose of the youth who are here to be aware of what challenges are we struggling in public service and how this software development for the future can maybe tackle. First, one of the challenges, the public sector is still lacks the requisite technical skills, which are critical to adoption, implementation, sustenance, and the evaluation of ISO standardization for quality management system. That's one of the challenges. Second, the standardization for quality uh, agenda in Kenya is it still faces information asymmetry problem. While the technical and the operational understanding of the concept and its system is op optimal, among the relevant professional community, we also know that very little information is available to the public to enable them to place informed demand for the highest product and the service for the quality standards. What, are, what we are seeing in the public service, sometimes citizens do not demand those services because if we are demanding high quality services, definitely then the supply side would, would, would kind of comply. <coughs> and I'm very happy that this particular RubyQ is developed arising from demand. It's not supply driven, it's demand driven. They have looked at what does the end user need to be able to become more efficient and uh, effective. Third, overall public sector funding for capacity building continues to dwindle, and this implies that even where ISO standardization has been prioritized, by the public organization, there is hardly enough resources to support training for the officers. And I'm glad at least when I heard RubyQ is all inclusive, that once you implement it, you don't have other small segments which are in, in, uh, increased cost. I think it's the best kind of a, a software that we should adopt within public service. Fourth, outside the state cooperation, the registrative and the performance framework that support the mainstream public sector organization leaves top managers with the retro or no managerial attitude to invest in ISO standardization for quality management. Five, the public sector in Kenya benefited from a monolithic shield in its areas of service provision. If in the public service, we tend to think we are the only ones who can provide some services. And I think this is being questioned now. As a result, with the no profit motive, the sectors exhibit those monopolistic tendencies with the no realist chances of adopting the highest standard for quality management or sustaining them. Therefore, if we are able to work with <coughs> private public partnership, I think like we are doing in today's launch then I'm sure we would, would really benefit because what is coming out clearly as public service is becoming more complex that government will not be able to provide all services needed by the citizen. They are working with the PPPs, looking at the policy, looking at the what laws and the regulations can allow us to do that, I think is the only option left, not only for public service in Kenya, all over. That's working with the PPP so that they provide some of the services that they can provide better. 
the government is being called upon to analyze which services are they best at and they should continue, and which services can be offered by others uh, that should be given away. Six, another major challenge to the adoption and the successful implementation of ISO standardization for quality management in the public sector is the low levels of employee motivation for results and the behavioral resistance to change. And that's why I'm thinking now with the youth coming and uh, being able to figure out how they can differentiate on ICT promises the kind of maybe way forward for public service. <coughs> Seven, we are studying the challenges that the public service faces in the adoption of the structured group of quality management system. The following opportunities exist for consolidating the gains and fostering progress. One of the opportunities involves performance contracting, the service efficiency and the quality demand inherent. Thank you. One opportunity is through performance contracting. Just as we mentioned that all government ministries with cooperation, we are all supposed to work within the performance contracting framework. Within performance contracting, one of the targets that we should achieve in every ministry and state cooperation is being ISO satisfied. So everybody has already started the process, and we are in different stages of realizing this. And that's why I'm saying the coming of this RubyQ system is just on time. We also we now know that performance contracting is not a substitute for poor management. I think we cannot say in government, if you get performance contracting, then you will get a, you you'll be able to it is a replacement for <coughs> it's a replacement for poor management and the quality management standard is needed. We also see an opportunity where a younger and more skilled public service in terms of demographic the public service is getting younger with the more and the more youthful graduates joining the service. This younger generation of employees promises more skills and a, an elevated capacity for culture change that would promote the implementation of ISO quality management and therefore the need to use Rubik, Rubik, Rubik Cube as a, 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 as a tool. Demand for quality services that means that we are seeing more demand for quality services from the citizen and, uh, and, uh, and the bill of rights in the new constitution, the citizens have gained higher consciousness of their right to continue to place more demands on the public sector and efficient for quality service. We also see as a, another opportunity uh, require, requirement of compliance with the Article 10 and Article uh, 2 that uh, Article 10 and 2 that uh, 2. The Constitution requirement on no public sector organizations to comply with efficiency, effectiveness, and the performance requirement will continue to compel public service to adopt service quality standards. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, in in the view of the present public service situation on quality management system, an integrated multi-sectoral multi strategy is needed to tackle the existing structural and the systematic, systematic challenges to the sector-wide adoption of ISO 9001 standards. We cannot achieve economic growth and development unless public service is effective and efficient. Therefore, the software on automation and certification is right overdue. Ladies and gentlemen, the potential approaches for enhancing use of the software would include enhancing the cooperation among Kenya Bureau of, of, of Standards, government department, the industry, and the academia to disseminate knowledge on standardization quality and the use of automated certification process. Two, improving budget for standardization training in the public sector. Three, developing a policy and a registrative framework for explicit integration of service quality standards in the public sector.
for awareness, education to citizenry, to enhance and inform their service quality and, service, uh, quality and consciousness. They have for them to be able to demand the quality services from, from the government. And of course, government do public service. The only way government delivers uh, services is through public service. Fifth, marketization of public services towards efficiency and cost reduction. And the final, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to once again thank and congratulate the Rubik Software Launch Organizers for bringing us all together as is industry stakeholders, the public service, and we wish that uh, uh, as this moves forward, more public organization including the mainstream public service, the state corporations, we will emerge themselves into using this software and by so doing, enhancing performance and effectiveness in the public service. And with those very many demands, I thank you. <laughs> I'd like at this point, thank you, Madam, for that amicable speech. As I always say, humility, just like pride, cannot be hidden. You are very humble. <laughs> I'd like to call upon the CEOs of uh, BizTech and uh, Pamoja so that uh, the chief guest may ribbon cut the software package. And uh, this is the time I'd like to call also for the cameras to be ready and the music also to be ready. So make sure you show it to us as she snaps it open. Are you ready? Uh, just a bit. Are we ready? Okay. Aha, a round of applause, please. Then you will show it to us. This is the official launch of the RubyQ software for ISO certification 9001-2008. This is the thing that will revolutionize your company. <laughs> the other side. Can <laughs> you show us the branded side? Yes. With a... Yes. Yes. <laughs> And then we also have tokens for our chief guest. <coughs> yes, for those who are asking if Rubik is wine, no. <laughs> but we give wine holders. That is a gift from Kamara and Pamoja. I'd also like to call upon uh, uh, director for youth, please also come. Thank you very much, every guest, for gracing us with your presence. It's always an honor to have you around. That is also. And another one for KPA, the people with the testimony. <laughs> and by the word of your testimony, you conquered them. Eh? Thank you, KPA, for the support towards Kamara and Pamoja. I can guarantee you that box is ISO certified. <laughs> yes. Yes, just one group photo. When I grow up, I want to be the chief guest. <laughs> I would like to call upon Kamara representatives to give us a vote of thanks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of Kamara and Pamoja and Gata and Bistek, I'd like to thank you very much for gracing us with your presence this morning. Uh, more specifically to Professor Kobia, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Stephen Jalenga, as well, Director of Youth Services. Peter Odera and uh, Gugogo as well, thank you for coming from Mombasa. Albi and Nikki, thank you for coming in from South Africa as well. Uh, to my colleagues from Kamara, Masi, Faith, Tony, 
and uh, Claire from Pamoja, thank you. Uh, so to all of you invited guests as well, thank you very much for coming to this launch. And more specifically to Jacob and his team from Ad Media, Asante Nisano. Uh, we are here for a while, so if you need to interact with any one of us, kindly feel free. I think there's still some breakfast out there, so if you're still hungry, knock yourselves out. Thank you again. <laughs> in a repetitive uh, fashion. And I think there is the, uh, the, the essence in driving that standardization in specifically in Africa is to get to the, on par with the rest of the world and become a global player as we uh, as the continent should be. Why is it important for working private to I think the, uh, the electorate are expecting from government to also deliver as uh, consumers or customers are expecting from uh, organizations to deliver quality, but at the end of the day, it's our tax dollar or our tax man or tax shilling that goes into the government and, uh, and government needs to, to show to the electorate that, uh, and who are the ultimate customer of our government, that they can deliver on what they promise. So the beauty of running a RubyQ system as a, as a cloud product, it, uh, it really means any user in the organization that's got access to the internet has access to the system. So let's say, I'm, for instance, I'm the HR director. Um, I would have certain metrics that I need to comply with on a weekly basis or even on a monthly basis. And I would go into the system on, on, that, uh, on those frequencies and uh, comply to certain uh, criteria or maybe make sure that all new staff that enter the organization has signed off on the standard operating procedure uh, for the organization. So it, it, sets the, it sets the trend and it sets the guidance for the organization on how to execute uh, on their daily and their monthly activities. It means that every camera that meets the, uh, the production line has the same quality that we set in the original model. So the person that takes receipt of the lenses at uh, the warehouse will test those lenses in a specific way and report that these tests were conducted with these lenses, which means when the lenses go into the cameras, the cameras are quality. So it means that you don't, you don't build faults into product or you don't build fault into an organization and that can apply to a private organization or a public organization. You don't want As it seeks to improve service delivery and bring them closer to the people, the government is automating these services and bringing them under one roof. This is being done through Huduma centers that are expected to be rolled out in all counties. This besides performance contract of state officers, which is aimed at improving the quality of services that the citizens get. As she presided over the launch of certification software, RubyQ, PSC Chair Professor Margaret Cobias said leveraging on technology for quality management system will improve service delivery in the public sector. Now that we have a new software, RubyQ, that can even help those who are satisfied or those who are still working towards it, I think we should see a, be a, a better future for this country in terms of the public service. The software will see the transfer of services online, thereby improving work quality and helping organizations cut costs as well as enhance efficiency. So it, as running it as a cloud system allowed the organization to have staff accessing the system from anywhere, uh, whether they're traveling overseas or they're sitting in their offices in, uh, in Mombasa or in Nairobi or wherever. The RubyQ software, which is cloud-based, targets various sectors, including the SME. Um, if we're talking about the RubyQ application, it would roughly cost an, um, a task user $76 to access um, the service on a monthly basis. And we purely base this on a per user per month and no capital intensive cost that's required of the end user. Ronaldo Willy, News Business.